What's good, everybody? Mr. Peters, today we're talking about average rate of change over interval. I'm going to explain what that is and how to solve. So, guys, when we're talking about average rate of change over interval, we're going to probably see this as ROC. And just understand that that is rate of change, and that is the change in Y divided by the change in X. And for me, I like to simplify this and just tell my students that we're basically going to be finding, right, we're going to be using that slope formula. So y, y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So now we understand what formula we're using. And they say to us, hey, we're going to find the average rate of change for the intervals a, b, and b, c. But what exactly do they mean when they say this, right? This is what it means. Your boy, Peters, I got y'all. So if we look at point A, right? So we know point A is 15, 395. And then B is 20, 480, right? It's right there on the graph for us. We know the points. So I'm going to set this up into the, the, the formula, right? Our average rate of change formula, slope formula. So I'm going to do 480 minus 395. So that's my Y2 minus Y1, right? And what we have to understand is that Y2 is paired with X2. So if Y2 is 480, that means X2 has to be 20. We cannot put 15 first because then we're not following the correct format of the equation. And that's one of the most challenging things to do. So please make sure you guys key in on this during this video. All right. So now we go to the bottom. And like I said, we have X2 minus X1. So we're going to simplify now. And once we simplify, we get 85 over 5. And this just simplifies basically to 17. So in this problem, we're not, we're not necessarily wor worried about the units. But typically, you'll have a unit, say, like um, uh, gallons per dollar or dollars per gallon, something like that. Like if we had $17 per gallon, okay? So understand that you're going to have unit rates and you're going to have to understand what exactly does this 17 represent in the problem? All right. So we're going to stop right there with this problem, right? We understand what the intervals are. So if I wanted to do the interval for B, C, I would just use points C and B only. But what I want to do before we finish this video is I want to look at a different example and explain it for a table. We looked at a graph. Now let's look at a table and see if we could do the same thing. So in the table here, they don't label anything for us, but they told us that they want us to determine the interval for A, B, and C, D. So two things. One, we should assume, even though more than likely it will be labeled, that this is in alphabetical order, A, B, C, and D. And understand that those X and Y values, you see, these represent coordinate points, right? These are the coordinates, the values that we are going to plug into that slope formula to determine the rate of change, right? So now that we know those two things, let's go through and see if we could find the average rate of change. And, I'll, and I'm sorry, before we go, very quick. Let's go to problem number one. I did forget this. I apologize. When we're talking about quadratics, right? So X squared, graphs that don't have straight lines, the average rate of change is not the same. So with A to B and B to C, it's not going to be the same answer, the same change in Y divided by X. So please just make sure you guys understand that. When we talk about linear equations and straight lines, 
that rate of change, that slope will be consistent, meaning the same thing through the whole line. But once it becomes X squared, quadratics, U-shaped graphs, that is not the case. All right. So now that I got, I, I, I remember to say that, let's jump back into this problem. So once we set up for the interval, and we're going to switch colors so this pops out because I know there's a lot going on. I'm so sorry. Right? Once we set up interval A, B, we're going to have 3 minus 1 all over 1 minus 0. So basically, our average rate of change is just 2 from interval A over B. And also understand that the order, it, it does not matter, right? Even if I did this the other way, 1 minus 3 over 0 minus 1, we would have got negative 2 over negative 1. And we know that a negative divided by a negative is positive. So if anyone was wondering about that, I got y'all. It does not matter as long as you plug in the correct values right in the correct place then we're good y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 all right so last problem for today and like i said if you found this video helpful we're gonna ask that you smash the like button for us subscribe to the channel and just leave any comments down below letting us know that this video was helpful for you so we're gonna do cd right and i'm gonna switch back to white now so with cd we have nine Oh, I'm sorry. I'm doing CB. Let's let's stop. We're doing 27 minus 9 divided by 3 minus 2. So now we're getting the interval for this particular interval, right? I mean, the answer, the rate of change <laughs> for this interval. And what we're going to get is 18 over 1. So as, as we can see, right, this interval here, this rate of change for CD, it's, it's a lot different than AB. So like I said, guys, this is our average rate of change of our interval. I'm Mr. Peters. I hope you guys found this video helpful. Like I said, leave any comments down below for future videos you guys would like to see or just letting us know that you enjoy our videos and find them helpful. Thank you guys so much for joining us today.